Welcome to Project Lakota Siches. We're going to be learning today Siche Beis in Chelik Yud Gimel, Parshas Kairach, page 56. This Siche here is a Meir de Gesicha on this Parsha, and here the Rebbe will go through the mitzvah of Shmiras HaMikdosh, the way it's explained in the Rambam, a Sefer HaMitzvah and a Sefer HaYad. And the Rebbe will show us that there are three different ways how to understand, how to define this mitzvah. And from the Yukim and the Loshna Rambam and a few other things the Rebbe points out of here, the Rebbe comes to a completely new understanding, a deeper approach to what this mitzvah of Shemir HaSamikdash is all about. Menak Suvim Sheba Parsha Seinu from the Psukim of this week's Parsha, Hamedabrim B'Shemir HaSamikdash, that speak about the mitzvah of Shemir HaSamikdash, Loma the Rambam the Sefer HaMitzvahs. The Rambam learns in the Sefer HaMitzvahs as follows. Shetzivanu lishmoyer HaMikdosh. The mitzvah is to guard the Beis HaMikdosh. Vilaleches svivoi tomid. And to walk around it constantly. Lachabdoi to honor it. L'roimimoy l'gadloi to elevate its status to exalt the Beis HaMikdosh. And for who Amroi, this is what the Pasuk says, La'arain va'ato uvanecho itoch lufnei oyele edus. That you and Aaron and his children should be there by the oyele edus. Right, so Leimar, the Pshat of the Pasuk is, Atem tiuli lufonai tomid, you should be there in front of me constantly to do the Shmira for the Besa Mikdash. Ukvar nichbal zeh tzivi beloshen acher, and it already says this mitzvah, in another terminology, v'hu amrei, and this is what it says, v'shamru es mishmeres oil mayit v'cholo, that you should guard the oil mayit. This is the lashon of the Rambam in Sefer HaMitzvahs. The Rebbe has a few questions on the lashon over here, but the Rebbe is first going to bring what the Rambam says in Sefer HaYad, in Hilchas Beis HaBchira, and then the Rebbe will come back to the Sefer HaMitzvahs as well. V'hine be Sefer HaYad mevayra Rambam, es ha-mitzvahs ha-say de shmiris ha-mikdosh v'zel ha-shayna. So here, the Rambam explained this mitzvah as follows. Shmiras Amikdosh Mitzvas Ase. Vaafapi Sha'esham Pachad Ma'ivim Vale Milistim. Although there's no fear, not from enemies, not from thieves, Sha'in Shmirasai Ela Kovadlay. The purpose of the Shmira is just for honor, to give honor to the Besa Mikdosh. Aina Daime, Paltirin, Shayashal of Shaimrin, La Paltirin, Shayna of Shaimrin. You can't compare a palace that has guards to a palace that has no guards there. So that's the definition of the mitzvah itself. And then Abam Shech Ba'alacha Beis, the Rambam brings us more details in the second halacha. Ushmir zu mitzvasa kol alayla. When's the time for this mitzvah? All night. Who does this mitzvah? Vahashemrim heim ha-kayanim va-leviyim. The guards are the kayanim and the leviyim. Shenema ato v'necha itoch lefnei oyo le-eidus kolayma atem tiu shemrim li. You should stand there guard for me. Vaharinema v'shomeres mishmeres oyo mayid. And then Neymar, and then it yet says yet another pasuk, a third pasuk. Va'achaynim kaidma lufnei oil moed mizracha Moshe va'aron ubanav shemrei mishmeres hakaidish. There is a ha'ara later on in the sicha where the Rebbe points out why the Rambam brings these three psukim. So this is the two halachas in the Rambam, the two main halachas of the Rambam when he to this mitzvah of shmiras hamikdash. B'tzarech lahavin. So now we have the following questions. Aleph. Tam hashinui b'sefer ha'alochis me b'sefer ha'mitzvahs. What's the reason for the change that we see here between the way the Rambam writes it in the Sefer ha'alochis and the way it's written in Sefer ha'mitzvahs? She b'sefer ha'yad hu mevi yisaksuvim le b'seif. In the Sefer ha'alochis, the Rambam brings the psukim as the source for the mitzvah at the end of the second ha'alocha, b'halocha beis. And not only that, and it's only being brought as a proof for one detail, for the detail of to identify who has this mitzvah, that the mitzvah lies upon the Kayanim and the Levim. He's only bringing the Psukim for this detail, to prove that the mitzvah lies upon the Kayanim and the Levim. But he's not bringing the psukim right in the beginning as a source for the very mitzvah itself, as the Rambam usually does in Sefer Ayad. Whenever he brings a mitzvah, a chiyov, or whatever it is, he brings right away the source of the pasuk in the Torah. Here, the Rambam doesn't do that. Mashe'en came the Sefer Hamitzvus, which is not the case in Sefer Hamitzvus, that the Rambam immediately brings the source. Shehem makiv limad alatzim chayves hashmira. Right in the beginning, the Rambam brings the source that she shetzivanu lishmair and the v'hu amrei. This is the pasuk la'ar natovenecha. 
why does the Rambam in the Sefer Ayad wait until the end and only bring the Psukim for this one detail to identify who this obligation lies upon? Second question is, in mitzvah sashmira enim ipne pachad me'oivim velistim. If, in fact, the mitzvah of guarding the base of Mikdash is not because of any fear of enemies or of thieves. It's simply a way to honor the base of Mikdash. Shala Mikdash. If so, the Shmira of the Beis HaMikdash should be all day and all night. But the Rambam clearly says, that the mitzvah only applies a whole night. And by day there is no mitzvah of Shmira. If we were to say that the mitzvah is because we're afraid of thieves or enemies, so that's a Shmira that's needed by day and by night. But if the idea is, uh, sorry, that's a mitzvah that's relevant primarily at night. So you would be able to explain why it's needed at night and not by day. But if, since we're saying that the point over here is that it's honorable to have guards standing by this palace, by the Beis HaMikdosh, that honor is, should be there by day and by night. What is the difference? To add another detail to this question, in the Psukim that the Rambam here quotes, sorry again, in these Psukim, there's no mention, there's no hint to the fact that the mitzvah is only at night time. And the simple understanding of these Psukim are, that the Shmira should be all time, day and night. As the Rambam himself says in the Sefer HaMitzvahs, that you should be there in front of me constantly. The Rambam uses the expression of Tomid that seems to imply that this is equal by day and by night. Dalid, now going back to the Loshan of the Sefer HaMitzvahs, there's a detail that the Rambam adds that seems to be superfluous and it's not exactly clear what it's doing here. The Rambam says that the Shmira and there's also that they walk around the base of Mikdash constantly. What exactly is this addition here of walking around constantly? What is this all about? What's connection does it have to the mitzvah which is to stand guard to guard the base of mikdash that's this new thing that the rambam sticks in here to walk around constantly so the rabbi begins as follows we'll understand this by the following introduction let's look at the opening of both two mesechtes tamid and midis which talk about this mitzvah of shmiras and mikdash and they both open with the same aloha that there were three places designated for the Kayanim to stand there guarding the Beis HaMikdash. So since the Mishnah repeats this twice, in one of these Mishnayas, it's extra. Following so if it says it right there, it's not like it's in another Seder or even in another far away. It's right there. We just learned it in Mesech the Midis, or in Mesech the Tome, that is. And right afterwards, in Mesech the Midis, it repeats the exact same Mishnah. The Mefadish to Mesech the Tome, it says as follows. Because the Mesechta of Tomid is coming to teach you all the halachas about the Tomid. Avedis HaKayanim, which is the Aveda of the Kayanim. Nakat Chilashmirasam. So it begins with the Kayanim where they were the night before that they're there guarding. Makim Shchivasam, the place where they're sleeping. Achu Mesadek Kalaseidachul. And then from there he comes to when they wake up in the morning, they come into the base of Mikdash, what they do the first thing, what they do the second thing, and so on. It's just sort of a lead and an opening to the story of the Hemshach of the Halachas that he speaks about, the Karb and So, meaning what the Mefarish is really saying is the place to talk about the Shmira of the base of Mikdash is not a Mesechta Tamid, it's a Mesechta Midis. And that's where it's supposed to be, and that's where it is. In Mesechta Tamid, it comes Derech Agav just as a lead in into what follows in the Halachas of Tamid. Aval, the Rebbe doesn't accept this, Kivan the safe safe bog far Mishnah zu. Since in the end, the fact is, even if it's only as a leader, but the Mishnah is there. There is a Mishnah in Tama that already tells us the halachas about the Shleishim, Mekaymis, Akainim, Shemrim. Lama Hutzrach, Lashanai, Sayyidah Pam, Bebereish, Mesech, the Midis. So why does it have to repeat it again in the beginning of Mesech, the Midis? Shabab, Hemshech, Lamashanama, Bemesech, the Tama, Begimel, Mekaymis, Chulu. 
which is a following after what it already says in Masech the Talmud, about these three places that it already said there. So why does it have to say it again? In Masech the Midas, where it actually talks more details about this Shemitah, it should have begun with the other, with the continuation, where it says, Bechof Aleph Mekaymas, that there are 21 places, Halavim Shemrim Bebeis HaMikdash, that the Levim would stand guard in the Beis HaMikdash. That's something new that I didn't say in Masech the Talmud. That's where it should have begun, in Masech the Midas, to discuss the additional places that the Levim would stand guard. So the Rebbe adds, after Yeshleimar, although we could simply say, the Kivan, the Tzarech Lashmi'inon, Shmiras Leviim may be din Shmira b'shlem Musay. Since he's adding more details and he's talking about the Shmira of the Leviim, the twenty-one places where the Leviim guarded, so the Tana goes back and tells you also the three places that the Kainim guarded to teach you the whole halacha of the Shmira in, in it fully, in all the details. So we could say that. But the Rebbe will explain over here that the Shmira brought in Masech the Tamid and the Shmira brought in Masech the Midis are two different things. It's two different halachas. So the explanation for this we could say as follows. Mitzvah Shmira Samikdosh. This mitzvah of Shmira Samikdosh, Yeshlevara Bepezefanim, could be explained in one of two ways. Aleph, Shihiprat Beinyani Besamikdosh. It's a detail relevant for the Besamikdosh itself. It's part of what's relevant for the structure of the Besamikdosh itself. Bez, another way to explain this is, Shiprat Ba'avedes Hakayinim Valavim. It's a detail, it's one of those things, as, for, from, as far as the Avedah of the Kayanim and the Levim, that they had to do, Shalayim Lishmer Es HaMikdosh. This is one of the jobs that the Kayanim and the Levim had in the Beis HaMikdosh. When the Rebbe uses the term Avedas, it doesn't mamish mean mamish like Avedah of a carbon. But Avedah is in a job, one of the jobs, not necessarily, the Rebbe in the Ha'ara points out that there's an argument about this, but it's one of the jobs that were placed upon the Kayanim. What does the Rebbe really mean? by these two ifanim that he's saying here. Again, let's just review quickly. Either it's a detail that's relevant for the Besamikdash itself, or it's part of, it's a position, part of what the Kainim have to do. They bring Karbonis, they do all kinds of work in the Besamikdash, and they also have to stand guard. It's relevant to the, it's one of the jobs placed upon the Kainim. So here, the Rebbe explains this in different words that clarifies what the Rebbe means with these two ifanim. Besigne nacher, to put it in different words. Mitzvah shmiras hamikdash he davar hanegeya la hamikdash atzmai. The mitzvah of guarding the mikdash is something that's relevant or that's demanded from the base of mikdash itself. Chayvas cheftze hamikdash tzarech liyis nishma. It's a chayve that the object, the structure, the base of mikdash itself demands that it should be guarded. That's the source of this chiv. Ela shechiv shmirizu hotel alakayin v'alavim. Who is the one that does the Shemitah? The Shemitah is placed upon the Kayim and Levim that do this job. But the concept of the Shemitah, the source and the necessity of the Shemitah is that the Beis HaMikdosh itself demands that it should be guarded. I, or perhaps we could say, no, the Beis HaMikdosh doesn't demand this Shemitah. It doesn't need it, it doesn't demand it, that's not what it's about. Oi, shemalachat chile hi choyvaz gavra. It's originally something which is placed as an obligation upon the people, upon these kainim. Mi mitzvahs va'avaydes ha'kainim va'halavim. This is the avayda of the kainim and levim that they should stand guard. Just like the Abish gives them a mitzvah to bring the other karbonis to do all the avayda in the base of mikdash, the Abish places upon them a mitzvah that they should stand. They should stand guard on the on this base of mikdash. Al shachiv ulishmer es mikdash. Of course, the chiv relates to the base of mikdash to the chefza, but the chiv is upon them that they should stand guard in the base of mikdash. So here. The Rebbe will clarify this even further and explain what this is based on. We have to understand what's the purpose of the Shemirah, so we'll be able to define what the source of this obligation is. So simply we can say, This will depend on what is really the reason, why is it required to have the, the Shemirah. If the reason for the Shemirah is for the honor, for the honor of the Beis HaMikdash, Kolosh Na Rambam. Ein edoim lepaltrin sh'yesh alav shaymerin, lepaltrin sh'yen alav shaymerin. You can't compare a palace with guards to a palace that has no guards. Harei zehu prat bepaltrin b'mikdash gufe. So then the whole mitzvah of Shemitah, where does this mitzvah come from? It's a detail in the mikdash itself. The mikdash itself demands this honor. Because it's a holy place, it's a paltrin, and it, it, it demands that you should give it the right honor. 
That's one one pshat. So according to this, it's connected to the Chefzeh. The Chefzeh itself demands this Shemitah. But if the reason would be, as it would simply be mashma and the Pasik and in Rashi and Parshish Bamidbar and in other places, that it's all about keeping the people that don't belong there out. A Zar or a Tome, the Chayetzibizah, anybody that doesn't belong should be, should, should be reminded to stay out. Or maybe to guard the precious Kalim that are on the base of Mikdash. So that's not the pshat that the Beis Mikdash demands this respect, that you should I give it respect, you should give it honor. It's not what it's about. It's one of the positions that the Kainim had to do, it was a necessary thing to be done in the Beis Mikdash, just like there are all the jobs that the Kainim do. There's the Karbanis that they bring and all the other things that they took care of in the Beis Mikdash. They had to stand guard to make to keep order. Whoever belongs in should come in, whoever belongs out should go out. This was one of their positions that they had to manage and take care of and organize things in the Beis Mikdash that it's placed upon the Kainim. That they, they are the ones, and the Levim as well, regarding the Shemitah, that they stand there to make sure whoever belongs should be there and whoever is not is not. So these are the two different understandings, definitions of what this mitzvah of Shemir Samikdash is all about. So based on this, we would be able to explain This mitzvah of Shemir is mentioned In the beginning of Masech Tamit And also in the beginning of Masech Tamidis Masech Tamidis in Yana Hu Kishma Masech Tamidis is, as its name indicates Medubaba b'midis ha-mikdash v'tzurasa b'nyana v'chal in Talks about the midis, the size, the measurements of all the different things in the base of mikdash It's shed and the way it's built and so on. It's talking about the chefts of the Besamikdash itself. It's not speaking about the Avedis or whatever other mitzvahs, the Avedis of Karbanis or whatever other mitzvahs that, ha- that their place has to be where these, uh, these Avedis are done, is in the Besamikdash. It's talking about the very structure of the Besamikdash itself. Amnam be Mesechta Tomit. What's the theme of Mesechta Tomit? Hamedubar ba Aveda is Hanasa is be Beis Hamikdash. Mesechta Tomit is speaking about the Aveda, the Aveda of Karbanis, the Aveda of Tomit that's done in the Beis Hamikdash. Ubalashin Arambam, the Rambam says in Perish Hamishnayis, Hey, Achoyu Makrivim at Tomit. It teaches me how they will makriv the carbon Tomit. So therefore, Rabbi Beis, a mesechtes kama begimel mekayim esakayin em shneimrim cholu. So therefore, the mesechtes it's repeated twice. This halacha of shmira ki b'mitzvah shmira sa mikdash yeshnam shnei yonim. Because we could say that the truth is that the mitzvah of shmira sa mikdash actually has both aspects to it. Inyim b'avedes akayinim. It's one of the details of the avedes akayinim that just like all the other avedes they had to do there. It's placed upon them this aveda to stand guard and to keep who has to be out out and whoever comes in should come in and so on. And then there's inyim b'amitosh atzmai. Then there's the fact that this structure, this holy base amikdosh, demands honor. It demands that you should stand and, and uh, stand guard and honor it. And therefore. There's an Indian in the action that's Negea, that's relevant to the, the structure of the Beis HaMikdash itself, and therefore it's also brought in Mesech Midas, where it speaks about the actual structure of the Beis HaMikdash itself. So now we have the Hezber of the two, the, why it's repeated twice in the Mishnais, and we get a deeper understanding here. We have the two different ways, and both are true, the Rebbe says, of understanding what this mitzvah of Shemitah HaMikdash is all about, as a dual purpose. One thing is just simply to keep things in order. Whoever doesn't belong shouldn't enter. That was the job that was placed on the Kainim. And the other thing is that the very Mikdash itself demands this honor and that it has to have Shmira to give it honor. move on. Now coming back to what we were discussing before in the Rambam, we could now understand. Masha Rambam lo'yhevi be'ilchus ha'beisab chira psukim ra'al l'raye al etzim din shmiris ha'mikdash. Why did the Rambam not do as he usually does and bring the psukim for the mitzvah right in the beginning when he defines the mitzvah itself? L'ta'asa Rambam b'yodoi, according to the Rambam, in the Sefer Ayad l'halacha, mitzvah shmiris ha'mikdash hi prat ve'inyim ba'mikdash atzmai. The Rambam is learning and the Rambam holds that the mitzvah of shmiris ha'mikdash is a detail in the Besamikdash itself. The Besamikdash demands this honor. 
When you have guards, that adds an, a great honor to the structure of the Beis HaMikdash. The Rebbe says another Geshmak of art. You see this from the very fact where the Rambam places the Halachas. He puts the Halachas of Shmiras Beis HaMikdash in the Halachas of Beis HaBechira. It speaks about the holiness and the mitzvah of building the Beis HaBechira itself. It's talking about the building of the Beis HaMikdash. This is not the place where the Rambam discusses the halachas that pertain to the Avedis that are done in the Beis HaMikdash. As the Rebbe, the Rebbe brings in the other 27, that's Hilchas Klei HaMikdash, Ba'oivdenboi, or Hilchas Tmidim Musafim. there it talks about the Aveda. So why did the Rambam bring the Halachas of Shmire, which seems to be just one other position, one other job that the Leviim and the, the Kayanim have in the Beis HaMikdash, why does he bring it in Hilchas Beis HaBchira? The answer is because the Rambam holds that it's the actual building of the Beis HaMikdash itself, the Palterin, that demands this honor. So therefore, it is a detail related to the Beis HaMikdash itself. That's why it belongs there in Hilchas Beis HaBchira. So now, the Rebbe says, Ulechein, lehevik suvimelu l'raya letzend in Shmira. Therefore, the Rambam does not bring the Psukim, whether the Psukim of Kairach or the Psukim of Mparshas Bamidbar, where it talks where, as a source for the very definition of what the mitzvah of the Shmira itself is. Because all you see in these psukim is rak aleph number one hachiv gavre shalakayanim valavim lishmas abayis the obligation that's placed upon the people upon the kainim and the levim that they have to do shmira. There's no indication in this pasuk directly that it's the mikdash that demands it. The mikdash demands this honor. These psukim are just talking about the mitzvah, the obligation of the mitzvah, the chiv of the mitzvah. Who's the one that does it? It's the kainim and the levim. But the, the deeper definition of the mitzvah, that what's the source of it, who demands this shmirah in the first place, that it's the Beis HaMikdash itself that demands this honor, that you don't see here in these psukim. Beis ve'ikir, and even more so, and even a greater point, ha'ksub in the parshas k'irach, bo'am be'hemshech l'tainis b'nei Yisrael, kol ha'korev, korev al mishkan Hashem yumos, yomos be'imer. These psukim in parshas k'irach follows the complaint of Yidin that after they saw what happened with k'irach and so on, they said that, look, it's uh, such a danger here. Whoever enters in a place where he's not supposed to go, he will be chayiv uh, misa. So how are we going to make sure that everyone stays out? That Aaron and his children and the Levim should be there and should make sure that nobody enters and nobody will be chayv misa. That there'll be guards and what's the purpose of them being guards? That the Yidin that don't belong in there should not enter into the Mishkan. So in the whole content of the Psukim, it's speaking about the detail of Shmiris and Mikdash that's placed as a position, as placed as an obligation on the Kayanim to make sure that people stay out. But the main definition of the Mitzvah that the Rambam understood which is the fact that the Mikdash itself demands this, that you don't see in the Pesukim over here. The Rebbe in the Hora says, and how did the Rambam know this, that this is the main definition of the Mitzvah? Because you see that this Mitzvah applied even in the Beis HaMikdash. And at the Beis HaMikdash, the gates were closed, and nobody would enter. Nobody was able to enter. And still the Mitzvah of Shemir HaMikdash is there as well. So you see that really there's a deeper meaning in this Mitzvah. It's not just about keeping people out, but standing guard. And keeping people out also adds honor, and therefore the Beis HaMikdash itself demands that honor that you should stand there. So therefore the Rambam doesn't bring the Psukim, because that would sort of give you the wrong definition, or it, it doesn't really prove fully the, the uh, definition of the Rambam. Of what the mitzvah of Shmira is, as the Rebbe concludes here. So in these psukim, you don't have a clear proof and a, a full clear proof for the main idea of, the, of what the mitzvah of Shmira Samikdash is all about. Which, according to the Rambam, is only for the covet of the Beis Hamikdash. It's a part and it's a detail of the Beis HaMikdash itself. The Beis HaMikdash itself is demanding this honor. Therefore, the Rambam doesn't bring these Psukim. Rebbe Nara 31 points out, but the Rambam in Sefer HaMitzvah does bring the Psukim. 
right in the beginning to define the mitzvah itself, even though the Rambam there also holds the same definition of the mitzvah. But in Sefer HaMitzvah, the Rambam is bringing the psukim in a more general sense to give you the, the general source of this mitzvah, as the Rambam always does. But in Sefer Ayad, which is a Sefer Halacha, as the Rambam is more medayik to define the actual halacha of this mitzvah, how to find it properly, and therefore he only brings these psukim later to tell us upon who this chiv lies, on the Kayanim and the Levim, but not to define the mitzvah itself. Rabbi continues, so, we've answered some of the questions that we asked here in the beginning of the Sicha, but we didn't answer all the questions. And the Rebbe will add some more questions. In addition to the fact that the other questions that we had were not yet answered. We had a question about why, at, why is the mitzvah only at night? Um, what's the lalecha svivoy tamid? That the Rambam didn't, the Rebbe didn't answer yet. So in addition to that, this explanation over here that we're explaining, that there could be two different approaches to understanding how to define the mitzvah of Shemitah Samikdash, and the way that Rambam defines it, that it's something that the Mikdash itself demands dishonor. This needs an additional clarification, and especially in regards to the repetition of the Mishnah and Mesech the Tamid and the Mishnah and Mesech the Midis, as we'll see. Aleph number one, the question here is, Im shmiris ha-mikdash imitam kovid, if in fact the, the guarding of the mikdash is for the reason of kovid to give honor, she'ein adayim ha-paltren sh'yesh alav sh'yemrim ha-paltren chulu, hare gan kishyeshnam rak sh'yemrim ha-chodim, even if there are only a few guards, or ya fil rak echod, or even just one guard, possibly, have a paltren sh'yesh alav sh'yemrim, so you're, it, it has the honor, you're giving it the honor. It's a place that's very prominent and it demands honor. You have a few shaymrim there, it, it gets honor. Shebezeh, who covered the mikdosh. So now the, the mikdosh got its honor. Uma shebegimu mekayim esakayinim shaymrim, ubechaf alaf mekayim esalavim. The fact that there are three places where the kayinim were positioned, and 21 places that the levim were positioned for their uh, guard, all these additional places, that's the Chayvas Gavre, that's what lies upon them. That they have to stand guard in these 24 places because of, as we said before, to make sure that to keep people out. That's the Chayvas Gavre that lies upon them. It's a separate thing. That's the other aspect of Shemir Samikdash. But as far as the fact that the, the, the building of the Besamikdash demands that you honor it, and since Ain't a doime, a paltrin that has shaymrim. That's a way to give honor. So if you have shaymrim there, if you have one, two, three shaymrim there, so you're giving honor. You have to give it honor, you're giving the honor. Then Cain, if so, ma tam, nemra mishne, b'chof alaf mekayim esalavim shaymrim b'mesech the midas, ha-mikdosh. So why is it that the mishne that tells us about the 21 places that the levim stood guard in the base of mikdosh why is this mentioned in mesech the midas, ha-mikdosh, which speaks about the building itself, the structure of the base of mikdosh itself? Meyacha, shemitzad ha-mikdosh, as far as the honor that the mikdosh itself demands, it's enough to have a few shaymrim to give it its honor. So now it's, it's a paltrin that's given its honor. It's a paltrin that has shaymrim. And therefore one, two, three would be enough. So dafke in the Mishnah of Mesech the Midis, which is discussing the actual structure of the Beis HaMikdash itself, is where it brings the 21 places, which is seemingly only a chi of Gavre. It's an additional obligation that the should placed upon the Kayanim and the Levim, not because it's adding to the honor of the Beis HaMikdosh. If the, if the Beis HaMikdosh demands that it should be honored, so by having any Shemrim there, one or two or three, you gave it its honor. So the additional ones are not relevant over here in this Masechta that's talking about the honor that the Mikdosh itself demands. Similarly, we could ask regarding the Mishnah of Shemitah that it says in Masechta Tomid, the question over here is, in the connection of the union of Shmirah to Mesech Tomid, in Yana Be'ikir. Let's look a little bit deeper into seeing what this Mesech is really about. It's not just about any of the Avedis of the Kainim and the Beis HaMikdosh. In Yana Be'ikir, Hulavayir Avedis HaTomid. It's coming to explain the Avedis of the Carbon Tomid. And as the name of the Mesechta indicates that it's a Mesechta of Tomid. 
Kmashkasa ve Rambam, as Rambam writes in Pirisha Mishnayis, Shemisachta Tomid, Eimba Dibur, Loyaldva Chochme, it doesn't tell you any Chochme, Loyaldva Issa Veheter, no Allahs of Issa Veheter, El Sipur. It teaches you, tells you the story, the order, and the story of how they would bring the Karbanis of Tomid and so on every day. Shu Oime, Eich, Hoye Makriven at Tomid, Kedei, last is Kain Tomid. To know, to learn from here how this has to be done constantly. So, Mesechta Tamid is a Mesechta that talks specifically about the, the carbon Tamid and other daily constant Avedis that were done in the Beis HaMikdash as the Rebbe brings in the Ara 37. That's the theme of the Mesechta. If so, Umadua Huvuba Sidre Hashmire Shalakayanim. Why, if so, does it begin and bring the Seder of the Shmire with the Kayanim was standing guard? True, it's also an Aveda. But it's not an Aveda that belongs into this specific category of Aveda, which is the Avedis of Tomid. The Avedis are in the If you want to bring it in a place where you have more in general all the Avedis of the Kainim, you have other Mesechtas that tell us the Halachas of the Kainim, the Avedis of the Kainim. There are other Mesechtas that talk about this. And it doesn't refer to Mesech the Tomid, but not, it doesn't belong in Mesech the Tomid, which is specifically discussing the daily Avedis that they had to do, starting from the Tomid in the morning. And as, again, as I mentioned, the Rebbe brings in the Ara 37. There's the, uh, the, 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 the Turma Sadeshan, and the Seder of the Marochis, and the Dishim Mizbeach HaPnimi, and the Dishim of the Menaira, all those daily Avedis that it did. That's the theme of Mesech the Tomid. It's not talking about the Avedis of Kain and Bechlau. So why does Shemitah Samikdash come in there? Gimel, another question here is, and here the Rebbe goes a step deeper into really understanding what Shmir Samikdash is all about. Gam Tzorach Oid Bir, we need additional clarification, additional explanation. Be'etzim Apirish, with the very Pshat that we said before, She Shmir Samikdash, He Prat Be'mitzvah Be'samikdash Atzmai. That this mitzvah is a detail related to the Be'samikdash itself. The Be'samikdash itself demands this honor. And that was our explanation why it's brought in the beginning of Masech the Midis that talks about the measurements and the shape and how to, how to build the very structure of the Vesa Mikdash itself. So the question is, Even according to this explanation, That the purpose of this Shmira is the covet of the Vesa Mikdash. The Vesa Mikdash demands this honor. It's, it's the Shmira that's being done for the purpose of the Beis HaMikdash. The Beis HaMikdash demands that you should honor it. That's the Pshad over here. But is it, is it part of the structure of the Beis HaMikdash itself? Does it have any relevance to the actual structure of the Beis HaMikdash itself? No. The Lama Nishnis Bimisachta Midis, Shenyana Midis Ubinya Besam Mikdash Atzmai. So then the question, if so, still remains why is this brought in the mission of Mesechta Midis that discusses the very measurements and the size and the shape and whatever of the Besam Mikdash itself? The Loya Vaidis Anasis Pai. There's nothing in this Mesechta where you discuss any of the Avaidas done in the Besam Mikdash, including an Aveda where its purpose is to give the honor to the Beis HaMikdash itself. True, it's for the, for the Beis HaMikdash, but it's not the Beis HaMikdash itself. It's not relevant to the actual structure of the Beis HaMikdash itself. This is an obligation, this is a mitzvah, that the kain have to stand guard to give honor to the Beis HaMikdash. So this is a chiv upon them, upon the kainim, to give this honor. It's not about the structure of the base of any, anything new that we're telling you, any change we're telling you about the structure of the base of Mikdash itself. So why is it in Mesech the Midas? In the end of the day, the Hezbo that we said before is not sufficient to explain how it comes into the Mesech that discusses just the sizes and the measurements and the shape and everything as far as the structure of the base of Mikdash itself. So here in Sivav, the Rebbe will give us a yet a deeper third and deeper understanding of what the mitzvah of Shemiris and Mikdash is all about. So, we'll understand by first beginning with the answer that some give, the question that we brought before in the beginning of the Sikha. If the point of the Shemiris and the Beis Mikdash is for the honor, so then why was that Shemiris not done by day as well? And the answer they give is, During the day, it's not necessary to have any guards for the purpose of giving honor. 
By the kind and walking back and forth and doing their work there in the base of Mikdash, that itself gives the greatest honor. But at night, when there is no work, work being, there's no avaida done in the base of Mikdash, then is covered the base of Mikdash Then it's necessary to show honor and to stand guard to show the greatness of this uh, building of the base of Mikdash. This is the answer that they give. When the place is full and it's hustling and bustling, then it's not necessary to give any additional honor. That is the honor. When, there are, when it's empty, when people are not there at all, so then you have to stand Shmira to give it its honor. So the Rebbe says, V'tzarech bi, or this answer needs an explanation. What exactly is, is, is the meaning of this? That there's honor given to the Beis HaMikdosh by the Kainim being there and doing their Avedah. What comparison is there between actually standing guard and the fact that there's people inside the Beis HaMikdosh doing their Avedah? It's two totally different things. The Rambam says, a paltrin that has guards is a more honorable place. So that's the only when you talk to have guards, people standing guard. That's what it is. How could you replace that? Why is that not necessary when you have people walking around and it's busy and people are doing things there in this place? So then you don't have to give it this COVID. How does that replace the fact that people are busy doing their Aveda there? How does that express any COVID? A paltrin has to have guards, regardless if it's empty or it's full with people inside. There has to be some kind of a comparison over here, and there's a new, a deeper definition of what the covet is all about, and therefore that covet is fulfilled by the fact that our kainim doing their aveda in the base of Mikdash. What is that? says, and therefore it, 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 we, we will say as follows. It appears to say as follows. The Shmira Zumipnea Kovid in Yana. What is this Shmira really all about? This Shmira that we say that for the purpose of honor, there has to be a Shmira. The idea here is Shalayasihu Daita Mea Mikdash. Not to take off your attention of the base of Mikdash. Ukmashikasa Varosh. And the source of this is a Rosh, right in the beginning of Masech Midis, or Tamid that is. Kovid a Mikdash Shalayasihu Daita Mimena. The honor of the base of Mikdash is not to take your mind off of it. Not by day and not by night. That is the definition of COVID. Not to be Masiach Das. And the Rebbe explains what he means by this. When you talk about not to be Masiach Das from something, we have other examples in Allah where it talks about the concept of Hesach Das. So the Rebbe will clarify here what he means by this Hesach Das. The Hesach Hadas we're talking about over here is not the kind of Hesach Hadas that's brought up right by Kochim, where if a person does not pay attention, he leaves Kochim without seeing what's going on. So then there's a Chashash, there's a concern that it may have come in contact with Tumah. And therefore you have to constantly pay attention that nothing should go wrong. It's not, the Hesach Adas is not just about negating that nothing should go wrong, or Chayei or anything similar. Ki im shlilas Hesach the very fact that there's never a moment that someone is not paying attention for this base, to this base of Mikdash, Meire al Reimimus v'gadlo sabayis, that itself expresses and elevates the status and the greatness of this building. There's always people here. There are always people that are either standing guard or walking around. There are always people paying attention to this. They don't take their mind off of this forever. That's the concept here that the Rosh means when he says that the COVID of the Beis Mikdash is not to be Messiah Das. When you have an item that just sits there on the table, that just sits somewhere and nobody looks at it, you have a building that nobody is, uh, cares about it and people come there every once in a while for some purpose, but otherwise it's just no, no one pays attention to it. So that lowers its status of, its, of importance. That lowers its status that it's something that's insignificant in people's eyes. The very fact that there's something that there's one person there, there's another person there, there's another person there, and there's people that are busy with this all the time, that elevates its very status of prominence. That changes the status of this place. So the actual Shmire is not just about the fact that the Beis Amitosh demands its honor. Because it's such a holy and great place, it, it's, it's deserving and it demands that it should get its right honor. 
No, by doing the Shemitah, you are actually making a change in the very status of the building itself. You elevate its status, as the Rebbe here says, The fact that you're constantly there paying attention to this place elevates the status of the Beis HaMikdosh. That's a much deeper understanding of what the Shemitah Beis HaMikdosh is all about. Valderech, and the Rebbe brings an example for this, where we where do we find this definition of Hesachadas, Al Derech Ha'inyan Mitfilim Vitzitz, similar to the halacha of Hesachadas, that there is when a person is wearing the Tfilin, or the Kain Godl wears the Tzitz, Shekals Man Shehein Olof, that as long as the Tfilin and the Tzitz are on you, Loi Asiyach Daite Mihen, you should not take your mind off of them. Afil Rega Echod, even just for one moment, Mitzat Kiddushasam, because of their holiness. Right? If you have an item that's not so holy, so then you can take your mind off of it. But if it's so holy, you can't take your mind off of it. So the, the, the very fact that you're not being Masiyah Das actually expresses the holiness that it has because it's so holy, so therefore you can't take your mind off of it. So in our case, the Shemira, which is not being Masiyah Das, there's always someone busy and paying attention to the Beis HaMikdash, elevates the very hefts, the very status of the Beis HaMikdash itself, changes and gets elevated. So now the Rebbe says, "Vehine inyan inyan shmir zushal yasir daitam mimeno hu inyan vabais atzmai." This idea, not to be masir das from the base of mikdash itself, this is something that accomplishes something. It changes something in the actual building itself. As I just explained, it actually, it's not only that it, you have to give it its honor that it deserves because it's such a holy place, so it lies upon the people to give it its honor. So that's also something which is comes from the Mikdash, because it's so holy, you have to give it its honor. It's not about giving its honor. The very Shmiret changes and elevates the status of the bias itself. So this gives us a much deeper understanding of why this is learned in the mission of Masech Midas that discusses the actual building itself, the size, the shape, and the building itself. This is not an Aveda which is done in the Beis HaMikdash. That's the place where you give the honor to the Beis HaMikdash. This brings a This brings a Chshivas. This elevates the status of the Mikdash itself. If we pay attention to the actual words of the Rambam, you can see this in the Rambam itself. You can't compare the actual structure itself, the actual palace itself, if it has guards or if it doesn't have guards. Okay, so according to the Pshat that the Rebbe said before, the Rambam is only bringing this to explain why standing guard adds honor. The Rambam wants you to understand why the standing guard add honor. So the Rambam says because a place that has guards is 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 a, has more honorable. So this is a way how to add honor. Now the Rebbe is learning the Rambam Kipshutai that the Einadayma that the actual Paltrin itself changes. It elevates the actual Paltrin itself. The Rambam is is not just trying to express and explain why this does give honor. It actually changes the Paltrin itself. So it's a dava So this is not like some other aveda here. Shemakim asiyase that the place where it's done is begimul mekayim is chulo bebeis hamikdash. That's done in the three places or twenty-one places in the beis hamikdash. Kiim zuyasiye bechashivos beis hamikdash. You're accomplishing something in the prominence and the level and the status of the beis hamikdash itself. Bishmira ala palterin when you watch when you guard a palace. Mishan ala palterin. You elevate, you actually change the status of the Palatron itself. It's not anymore said the same like another palace that does not have these Shemrin. That is the essence of the Shemiris HaMikdosh according to the Rambam. The Shaloya Siyak Daitom HaMikdosh that the Rosh also says that it's something that makes an actual change in the Cheftze, it elevates the Cheftze itself. Similarly, Anybody that in his lifetime the Beis HaMikdash was not rebuilt, it's as if the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed in his lifetime. The Rebbe brings here from the Raga Chavra that the Churban Beis HaMikdash is an ongoing thing, that as long as it's not rebuilt, there's the Churban that's happening again and again. And how much we have to think about this and how much we have to work and, 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 and rebuilding the Beis HaMikdash. So, the Churban Beis 
Beis HaMikdash, who Inyan Nimshach, so according to the opinion that the Chorb Beis HaMikdash is an ongoing thing, Yeshleimar Baha Toyeles the Mesech Midas. So we could say, regarding the Toyeles, the purpose of what Mesech Midas is teaching us, all the details about the Beis HaMikdash, Shehu Zeichem Midas HaMikdash, it mentions and it tells you all the sizes and measurements of the Beis HaMikdash, for the purpose that when the Beis Hamikdash will immediately be rebuilt, yes, lishmoy velases atavnes ahu, so you'll make it in this size and this shape. Vatavnis vatzuris vaerech mipnei shu beruach hakodesh. These are all things that we know beruach hakodesh. K'may shalom and akol b'ksav yad Hashem alai hiskel. The Eibush just tells us this beruach, but this is beruach hakodesh that the Eibush said exactly how it should be built. So hine. When a person learns about these halachas, to know how to rebuild the base of mikdash that's being destroyed every single day, and a demidaisav to know all the sizes and shapes, as we know that Rebbe Kachzich in this Indian that we should learn hilchas base abchira, especially in the times of the three weeks that's coming up not long from now, which also includes another part of what the base of mikdash is really about. That you're not Messiah Das in the Beis Hamikdash. That elevates the status of the Beis Hamikdash. Harayze gam ato chorben Beis Hamikdash b'dargosay the palter and sheyashal of shaynuchul. What a person has to realize is that when he's learning about the Beis Hamikdash, because he wants to rebuild the Beis Hamikdash, what does he want to rebuild? He wants to rebuild not only the physical structure of the Beis Hamikdash, but the chshivas of the Beis Hamikdash, the holy and great place of the Beis Hamikdash. That's what he's learning about to know these measurements to be able to rebuild the Beis Hamikdash. It's not just a physical place that was destroyed and that we have to think about constantly that this Chorban is happening again. A person should realize that it's the Cheshivas and the real status of the Beis Hamikdash that's being destroyed that we learn about over here in Mesech Tomit to tell us about how to rebuild the Beis Hamikdash. So therefore the Tana included the Shmir Hamikdash to give us the appreciation to understand that it's not just a physical structure. There's the additional Cheshivas of the Beis Hamikdash. The Rebbe continues, now comes back to explain and answer the questions that he asked before. The Rebbe begins with um, the question of Masech Tomit. So why is the mitzvah of Shmiris and Mikdash brought in Masech Tomit? So the Rebbe's question before was, yes, it's true that you could say that one aspect of the Shmira is an Avedah that's placed upon the Kayanim. And Masech Tomit speaks about the Avedahs, certain Avedahs of the Kayanim. But the Rebbe's question was, but this Masech speaks specifically about a certain category of their Avedah. It speaks about the Avedah of the Tomit, of the constant daily Avedahs that they did. Where does the midst of Shemir Samikdash come into that theme? So now we'll understand this fact here. That this mitzvah of is at, the, at night time. So that's another question that the Rebbe asked. Why is the mitzvah only at night? And vizesh and nishnus be mesech And also, why is, why is this brought in mesech tetamit? So the Rebbe ties beautifully these two things together. That one answers the other. By yoyim, during the day, the Kainim did their Aveda the Beis HaMikdash as Chalosi Aveda Satomit Babaykar, which began early in the morning with the Karben Tomit, Misha Sheheir Pnea Mizrach, when the sun came up and the eastern, eastern part of the sky was light. Doing the Aveda the Beis HaMikdash wasn't just a simple activity. It included also kavana, the kavana, the right intentions that they have to have when they bring these karbanas. Or the shem shishu dvarim azavach nisbachulu. And there are six things actually that I have to keep in mind in, in doing the Aveda. O pshite shekesha kainim ba'avidasam. So obviously when the kainim are there doing their Aveda, and it's not just an external Aveda, they're actually paying attention and, and thinking about certain things in their Aveda related to the Beis HaMikdash, as the Rebbe points out in Order 47, This is the absolute opposite of the Beis HaMikdash being a place which is empty and no one's paying attention to it. If the definition of the honor is about what? The definition of the honor over here is that you elevate the status of a place. You elevate the very status, not that you have to accord it its honor. You have to give it its honor, so you just have one, two, three guards standing there, that gives it its honor. But if the idea is that you want to cause more, you want to elevate the very status and prominence of the place, so that could be accomplished over here by the Aveda, by the fact that people are walking around. Right? So the, the, when we say that there's Aveda, it's not only walking around, but they're doing their Aveda. So when we say that the Aveda that's done in the Beis HaMikdash serves as a Shmire, that's because... We understand now that the whole idea of the Shmira is to change the status of the Beis HaMikdash. Aval Balayla, 
But when it comes night time, there is no Aveda done in the Beis HaMikdosh. Right? At night time, there's nothing there, it's empty. Nitztavu b'shmiris ha-mikdosh, over here, comes in the mitzvah, that's the time when the mitzvah has to be fulfilled, shalei siichot aitom imeno, that they shouldn't take their minds off the base of mikdosh. In other words, of course, really, the mitzvah of shmiras ha-mikdosh, in essence, is a mitzvah day and night. There is no source in any possible that limits this mitzvah to only by day and not by night. And the Rambam and Sefer HaMitzvah himself says, Tomit, that the mitzvah should be tiu l'li l'fanai tamit, as the Rebbe pointed out in the beginning of the sicha. Elamai, by day, that the point of the mitzvah of Shmira was accomplished. It was done by the fact that people are there and busy doing their aveda and with kavana, that automatically elevates the status of the place. Masha'en came by night when nobody is there, so you need that Shmira to maintain that status of the place, that, it should, that it's on a higher level because of the presence of people that are there. So this is the specific connection to what it talks about in Mesechta Tomit. Shema'i time in Nishnas Bitchilasa, and therefore it's brought in the beginning of this Mesechta. Kitoichin Shmire Zu Nasa Yedea Vedis Atomit Vakarbonis Pachlal. This Shmire is done through the Tomit and the Karbonis that are brought every day in the Beis Mikdash. So it's mamish beautiful how the Tana brings it in over here. Because Anachanami, the Tana is talking about Mesechta Tomit, which is the Karbonis. But these Karbanas, the daily Karbanas that brought the Kayanim into the Beis HaMikdash and there were people there busy in the Beis HaMikdash on a daily basis, had sort of a dual purpose. It also served the purpose of creating a Shemitah, creating a certain level of prominence and elevating and changing the status of the Beis HaMikdash. So therefore the Tana begins with saying that by night time it was empty and therefore you had to have people to create that status, to give that status to the Beis HaMikdash by standing there. By day you had the Aveda and Taka, the Masechta talks about the Aveda of the Tome, the daily Avedas that were done there, but because the Tana brought the Shemitah first, we will now see the connection and we understand that the Aveda of the Tome, when the, when the Kayanim were there constantly in the Beis HaMikdash, served another purpose. It also accomplished the Shmira to elevate the status of the Beis HaMikdash. So it's a flow, it's one Indian. Based on this, we can say that there's an actual Nafkimin Alalocha. When it says that they would guard the Beis HaMikdash all night, doesn't necessarily mean the entire night. It means until, the, when, until when they began the Aveda of Tomit. That, that was the two aspects of the Shmira. The Shmira by night was actual guarding, and the Shmira by day was when the Kainim came in to do the Aved of Tomit. So as soon as the Kainim come in to do the Aved of Tomit, so the shift of the Shmira of the night could uh, could go out, and it's, it's handed over to the Aved of the Tomit. And the Rebbe in Order 51 points out that this is not necessarily or in Order 53, the Rebbe points out, in Order 51 and 53, the Rebbe points out that this is not necessarily beginning from when Netzachama, from when the sun came up, it started even earlier. They came even before Aleis HaShachar. They would already come in and start making the preparations for the Aveda of the day. Or the time when they're never allowed to enter into the Beis HaMikdash later than that, which was very early on, even before it became day. Sha'az, as long as the Kayanim already arrived for the daily Aveda, Ayyadeh Aveda Sa Kayanim, Miskayim, Taichina in the Shmira Samikdash, Vain Sayyidh Bishmira. So you already have what Shmira is supposed to accomplish, and you don't need to fulfill the actual mitzvah of Shmira Samikdash. So therefore, there could be an Afghan here. It doesn't mean like usually the mitzvah of a night. You can say until Alisa Shachar or maybe B'diyavar until Netzach It's not a mitzvah where there's any Pasuk in the Teira that it says that this is a night mitzvah. Feish not a night mitzvah. It's a mitzvah for by day and by night. Elamai by day, but poil mitzad the matzvah in the Beis HaMikdosh, there's no place to do this mitzvah. The status of the Beis HaMikdosh is already elevated by the Aveda there. By night, you have to maintain that status and you have to be there during the night as well. As soon as the Kayanim of the day come in, so then it's that the Shemira is already becomes irrelevant. Now the Rebbe goes weiter. Al Pizei Shlevai Mashab Mesechta Tamed Huvu Ra Ka Gimel Mekaimes Shakayinim Shemim. So this explains why in Mesechta Tamed it only brings the three places that the Kayinim did the Shemira. Vila Be Mesechta Midas Huvu Gam Shal Avim Ha Yishemim Bechof Alaf Mekaimes. And over there it brings the additional places, the twenty-one places that even the Levim did the Shemira as well. 
So here the Rebbe says it's, it, mamash, it fits beautifully with the theme of both of these Masechtas. The Masechta Tomid, the Masechta of Tomid, Loi Bolavai Mitzvah Shmiris and Mikdash Mitzad in Yon Noi Hu. This is not the place where the Tana is focusing on telling you the halacha of Shmiris and Mikdash. Kim Lahadgish, it's just coming to emphasize Achas Mipulois Avedis Atomid Hashave O Baba Hamshak the Shmiris Vesam Mikdash. The Tani here is bringing the Shmiris before because the Avedis of the Tomid, besides the Aveda of what they wore for themselves, the Aveda of Karbanis, it served a dual purpose. It also created a Shmira for the Beis HaMikdosh, it elevated the status of the Beis HaMikdosh. Mitzah, that second thing that the Aveda of the Tommy did, there's a connection to the Shmira that was done by night. The Shlilas has Hadas Ma Mikdosh, to not ever not pay attention to what's going on into the Beis HaMikdosh. That's the connection here. There are various different levels to what degree a person is not Messiah Das to something. When you pay attention to something, there's many different levels to this. There's the way it's done by night, that's the way it's done by day. So the Tana is telling you that there's the way they were not Messiah Das by day through the Avedis of Karbonis. There's the way you're not Messiah Das by night through the Kainim standing on the Shemitah. So he nay, since the whole Indian of Shmire is brought over here in, just the Hemshech to one detail of the carbon tomid that the Kainim brought in the base of Mikdash, he nay, bezene gave the Iker in Shmire sa Kainim. Over here, what's relevant is only the places where the Kainim did their Shmire. Why? Shemitzvah Shmire Asai, Shiyu a Kainim Shemre mi Bafnim. The Kainim's positions of Shmire were on the inside. They did uh, the Shmir on the inside of the Beis HaMikdash. There's a machlekes exactly where on the inside, but more on the inside and not on the outside. So then, Behemshech to that, we're saying that when the Aveda of the Tomid began at the Beis HaMikdash, Nishtal Hesachadah Zeh, this Hesachadah of to not, to not pay attention on the inside is now negated because the Kainim come inside to do their Aveda. So therefore it's not necessary to have anymore the Shmira of the Kainim on the inside. That's what we're talking about, how these two things are mashlam one for another. You have the Shmira and you have the Aveda of the Tamid. So therefore we're only bringing this category of the Shmira Mibifnim that's connected to the Aveda of the Kainim that's done Mibifnim. Valkane and therefore, a mokim lahavi. There's no place of it to bring as well. Gama chof alef mekaimis. The other twenty-one places. Shalavim ay yishemrim that the levim would stand guard. Shehem ay yishemrim mibachutz. They stood guard on the outside. The ain zed doy meklal. You can't. First of all, it's it's physically not in the same place. It's on the outside. It's not on the inside. But the Rebbe says even more. It's it's a different kind of shmire in the sense of the hesachadas. It's a different level of not being masir das. You can't compare the fact that you're paying attention to the place by being inside the building and doing Aveda on the inside to not being Masir Das just by standing guard outside the building. It's not the same thing. You can understand it very simply. If you have a building that nobody walks into it, but this guard standing outside, that's a certain attention. You elevate the status of this property, of this building to some extent. But the Aveda on the inside is already on a different level. People are inside. This is a place that's important. It's busy. People are working there. So therefore, it's a different category. Elo, shebachlal masayim mona. Bechlal masayim mona, that's just like the, the, the marshal of 200 includes 100 in it. Shavedis atomit potro, loirak shmira sakayim, emelagam shmira salavim. The Aveda of the Talmud, which is on the inside, and which is paying a deeper attention, and being busy on the inside would obviously uh, pat to you. You would be exempt of doing the lesser Shemitah, paying attention to a lesser degree by the Levim standing on the outside. So that's the explanation of Masech Tomit. So the Levim's Shemitah on the outside is not relevant to the Aveda of Masech Tomit that's talking about the Aveda of the Kainim on the inside, which is a higher level of not being Masech Das when you're inside. Om Nambi Masech Midais. But in the Sechte Midois, Shemavayir, Ba Shmiris, and Mikdash, be in Yon Na, the Chashivis, Beis, and Mikdash, Atzmai. Here, we're discussing the fact that the Shmiris, and Mikdash, actually adds Chashivis. It actually elevates the very status of the building itself. Shali Deza, Nasa Paltin, Sheshal of Shemrim. It changes its status to become a palace that has guards. So Mavayir, Hena Gimel, Mekayim, Shakayim, Shemrim, Vehen Shmiris, Alavim, Bechal, Falav, Mekayimis. Here, the Mishnah does explain both the three places that the Kainim do the Shmira and the 21 places that the Levim do the Shmira. It tells you all the places and all the people that were there, there doing the Shmira.
Why? כי אף שגם על ידי שמרים מועטים, נעשה פלטר נשאר שלו שמרים. Even though it is true, that even if you have only just a few guards, they create this fact that now this is a palace that has guards. But הרי בוי סופס, מספר השמרים, מצד חיובי דגברה, ומאיזה טעם שיהיה, by adding more guards there, even if those, that חיוב is a חיוב that's placed upon the people, that they have an obligation upon them to be there and to do that guard, for whatever reason. Even if the reason is, like the Rebbe said before, in order to keep strangers, Klal Yisrael, that don't belong out over there. But you have not one person, not two, three, four, five, you have many people that are doing Shmir for whatever reason. Mitaisev gamkein b'shmirosa mitzad mikdosh. This in itself enhances the point of the Shmir for the purpose of the Mikdosh itself, which is to elevate the status of the Mikdosh. Shekulon poyol and bekovet v'gadlos ha-Mikdosh. They are all effective and elevate the status of the Vesa Mikdosh. Kulam chelik bezeh shenasa palter and sheyashol of shemrim. They all are playing a role and all adding to the fact that this palter now became this palace now became a place that has shemrim on it. Right? If you have a place that you have only one shemrim there, that elevates the status to one extent. If you have a place that has five guards there, that elevates its status even more. If you have ten guards, twenty guards, they are all adding and playing a role in elevating the status of the place. So now that we understand. The deeper understanding that the Rebbe told us here about Shmiris HaMiktosh, it's about changing the Chavtzeh, it's about elevating the status. So therefore, every person, all of the Chafal of Mekaymas and the Gimel Mekaymas at the Kayanim stood guard, they all add to elevating the status of the Beis HaMiktosh. So in the Sechtim Midis, where it discusses the, the structure of the Miktosh itself, we bring in the Sinyan, we bring in the, all of the people that are standing guard that contribute to elevating the status of the Beis HaMiktosh. I mean, that's the Chiddush of what the Rebbe is saying here. Masha'enkin, if you're going to say, I mean, according to what the Rebbe said in the beginning of the Sikha, that the point over here is, yes, the Beis HaMikdosh demands that you have to honor it. You have to submit, so you have to give honor to the Beis HaMikdosh. So, you have, if, you have one person standing there, two people, three, you gave it honor. Al Derech, there's a mitzvah of Pnei Seva Tokim, Vadarta Pnei You have to give honor. So you stand up, you gave honor. Over here, you have to give honor. When you have guards, you give honor. So you have guards, you give honor. But Sha'enkin, if it's about changing the status of the place, you have an item that one person pays attention to it. That, that elevates its prominence to some degree. You have a place, you have an item that two people, three people, ten people, a hundred people are paying attention to it, are following it. That makes it even more important. That makes it even more prominent. And therefore, every person standing guard by the Beis HaMikdosh adds and contributes to the prominence and the status that we are elevating the Beis HaMikdosh to. Al pi anal, so now based on this, Shegedesh Shmir is umipni akavadu, she yeshemrim svivoi veenan masichin daitan mimeno. That the concept of the Shmir here is for people to stand guard. And to always pay attention to the Beis Hamikdash. Yesh levaya mashkasa v'Rambam. We could understand the additional line that the Rambam says in Sefer Hamitzvahs: Lo leches svivoy tamit to walk around constantly. B'shaiches lo mitzvahs shmiras Hamikdash in relation to this mitzvah. And here the Rebbe brings a brayse in the Gemara. Tana we learned in a brayse ish harabayis hayim mechazar akol mishmar or mishmar. There was a person of the harabayis that would walk around by every guard post v'chol mishmar she'en oimit and any of them that were not standing nikar shuhu yoshan and it's noticeable that he's sleeping chayftei b'makol cholu he would hit him with a stick to wake him up. So the a simple pshat over here is you just sort of had to have a guard for the guards. You had to have somebody to make sure that the guards are not falling asleep on their job. So the Rebbe explains in a deeper way. The whole idea of the Shmira is for the honor to elevate the status of the Besamikdash. That you always have to pay attention to this place. This person that was going around to seeing what's going on with all the guards, from one position to another, to make sure that the people there should not fall asleep and not pay attention to the Beis HaMikdosh This itself, that you have this person walking around so it's not just a technicality that you have to have a guard for the guards the very fact that he's walking around and waking up people that's a greater level of attention 
that you're giving to the Beis HaMikdash. And therefore that itself elevates the status of the Beis HaMikdash even more. Teich and Mitzvah, Shemiris HaMikdash, which is the, what the whole Teich of the Mitzvah is about. We can understand this in very simple terms. When you have a certain level of security on a building, on a site, whatever it is, but then you have a double layer of security, a, a triple layer of security, that itself creates a much greater status of what this place is all about. So over here, by the very fact that this person is walking around and he's making sure to wake up people, that itself brings him greater attention. You're giving more attention to this face of Mikdash. According to this, we could explain another interesting thing. It says in the Mishnah in the beginning of Thomas as follows. Base of Tinnis, base of Nitzutz, those were the two places. Hayualiyais, they were uh, second, on the second floor. And the Raven would stand guard over there. Who are these Raven? Raven means youngsters. They were youngsters that they didn't even they didn't reach the age to serve in the Beis Hamikdash, so they couldn't serve in the Beis Hamikdash, and therefore they stood guard over there. Pirsham Mefarshim, the Mefarshim go even a step further and say that they were actually younger than Bar Mitzvah, and they stood guard over there. So the question of here is, the question is asked, How do they leave this mitzvah for children that can't fulfill the mitzvah? How could they fulfill this mitzvah, Bechlal, if they're not obligated, they have no das, they can't do the mitzvah, so how are we giving this mitzvah to the children? And based on what we said before, Shazel Mitzad Hesach Hadas, the whole point of the Shmir of the Beis Mikdash is that you have to always have the Das to pay attention to the Beis Mikdash. Seemingly, this question is even stronger. How do we leave this to the children that have no Das? How could they do this mitzvah? Ulam, however, based on how we described before. What the pshat and the position of this ish harabayis that would go around is, it wasn't just a technicality that he went around to wake up people. It's more than that. That So he was going around and he was the guard on the guards. He was also a shaymer. He was also doing the shmirah in the sense of paying attention to the base of mikdash. As the Rebbe before said, he's actually contributing to, to the attention of the Beis HaMikdash to a greater degree, not just a technicality of what he's doing. So if so, so you have a godl, a person that's bar mitzvah, a person that's a godl, and he's standing on top of the cotton and watching what he's doing, and, and, and there, right there, Sha'oz bekama bekama dvarim. Regarding many things that require machshava, that require that the cotton should be able to think for himself and have das, mahani gamaisa cotton betzir for machshava shal agad loim medagabov. You could do, you could have the action of the cotton, and you combine that to the machshava of the godl that's standing there by him, and it's it's going to be a proper aveda or a proper shchita, for example, in different different cases where this is applied. So the same thing over here. This person that's walking around is not just a vekker that he wakes up people. He is oimed al gabam. He is doing this mitzvah of shmiras hamikdash. He's standing by them with this mitzvah. We could add another detail to this, Rebbe says. If you could combine a godl to what a cotton does when you actually re need real machshav and kavana, you have to have an intention about something specific, and nevertheless the godl oimed al gabav helps for that. Over here, this concept of shmir not to be masiach das does not require an actual machshav that you have to have, uh, concentrate on something. The very fact that people are standing here paying attention to the Beis HaMikdash, that gives the honor, that elevates the status of the Beis HaMikdash. That, um, that shows how people are not forgetting about the Beis HaMikdash. And therefore, So it's enough if the um, Godel, the person that's walking around, is not mamish standing by him all the time as it actually was, he was walking around from one Mishmar to another. So by the Godel Oymed al Gabob, you have to have him there all the time. But if you hear the Rebbe adds, it wouldn't be necessary to have him by you every single moment. He would go around from one to another, and he would stand coming from one to another, and that is enough to be combined to the Aveda that the Ketanim do and they stand their guard on the Beis HaMikdash because this gives it the, the proper honor and this does elevate the status of the Beis HaMikdash even when it's done through Ketanim. So, just as a conclusion to the Sikha, 
The Rebbe here, just to, to summarize, the Rebbe here taught us three Eifanim how you could understand the mitzvah of Shemitah Samikdash. Is the mitzvah of Shemitah Samikdash just a chiv on the Gavra? That there are certain things that have to be managed in the base of Mikdash and you have to guard that those that don't belong should stay out. And that's what it's all about to make sure that there's law and order in the base of Mikdash and the Kayanim are the ones that are the police standing there to keep people out. Or the Rebbe says it goes a step deeper. The base of Mikdash being such a holy place demands honor. And the Kayanim have to stand there to give the honor to the base of Mikdash. Or the Rebbe's Machadish that it goes even a step deeper that the Shemitah itself changes and elevates the status, the prominence of this place. It actually makes it a, not stam a physical building, but it, it expresses and brings out the true shivas of what the Beis HaMikdosh is, the Kedush of the Beis HaMikdosh, when people are standing there and guarding the Beis HaMikdosh constantly.